We're going to make a slight shift in the program, starting with uh, Jeff Kolrath, um, because he is on a time schedule and, and we don't want to delay him any further. Uh, but we're very happy that he's here today to share his personal testimonial. Uh, we know that he doesn't speak in public all that often, so we're very, very honored, and I hope you will welcome him with a warm applause. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Kolrath. So, a little story about Colored Group and failure. Failure is an option. <laughs> failure is a way of learning. Failure is a way to develop the business. So our company started in 1910 with my grandfather as a son of a baker selling bread to the school next door and then starting a grocery business, a wholesale business. Uh, they had a bakery at home with the father with 11 children. Their mother died at the birth of the 11th child. So all the children had to work with the father in the bakery. And Franz, my grandfather, was the second son and he started selling the bread to the school next door. And then a bit further into Bees and in Charleroi. Um, and the company started from there as a wholesaler. If I look at the history of the company, we went broke almost three times. Just in 1945, 46, just after the war, it was a very difficult period where they had to be very creative to survive. 1959, 1960, 61 was a crucial period when the supermarkets came into the market and they had to change their whole way of thinking and acting and doing business. And in 1982, 83. So three times almost broke. That's a little experience. For the future, we don't know yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, failure. What is failure? For me, it's... Uh, if you look at the Latin meaning of the word, falere, something that is missing at a certain point. The result of my actions is not what I expected, because there's something missing. Consciousness, a pure intent, and willpower. If one of these three is missing, then failure is coming to meet you and to learn from it. So some tips. First, what we learned is it's good to have a dream, but not just a dream, but a, a heartfelt dream. So what am I passionate about? Because that tells me something. What makes my heart sing? What gives me joy, inner joy? Three, what are my talents? Because talents show you your way to what, what am I doing here? What am I here for on this planet? So talents, we're discovering more and more. If you look at your own talents, it shows you the way, what am I here for? What I, am I doing here? What is my intention, my deeper intention, my heart intention, my soul intention? So we, exp <laughs> we see that for more and more members of personnel, it's very important to have contact with their own motivation, with their own passion make connection with the talents and then see what am I doing here and why am I doing it. It's not because my parents expected me to become a doctor or to become an economist or whatever. It's because there's an internal drive and to make connection with that internal drive. And then putting people together and to see if there is a common denominator in their personal drives, if we put all these personal drives together, is there a common denominator? 
and can they build a dream, a vision for the future together? Because the future is already there. The moment the imagination and the feeling is strong enough, the future is set. And then it comes to you. So what we experience is that the stronger and the clearer the dream is, that many people together build, the stronger the energy becomes and the, the bigger the chance that the dream becomes reality. But it has to be connected with the inner, with the heart. That's what we are experiencing more and more in the company with new projects. So it's very important to have a dream, but the dream connected with your talents and with your passion. And then putting it all together with a team of people. The common intent. That's step z zero. So having a dream that fills your heart with a clear intent, a pure intent, a strong will willpower and an active consciousness. So male, female energy, having male energy, for, this is what we want to go for, this is our dream, and at the same time have very much female energy of continue being in the acceptance mode, feeling what is happening. Every signal that comes in from the outer world and from the inner world, take it in and adapt your course at the same time. Not going blind, storming into <laughs> the wall. So strong willpower, a clear and pure intent, and a very active consciousness. That's step zero. Then step, uh, step one is to make a plan. And what we learned is it's good to make a plan starting from what you have available at the moment. What are the capabilities around the table? Which are the people around the table with which talents? What are the tools we have available? And start from there. Not starting from the dream, and this is what we need, and we need this, and we don't have that. Always start just what do you have available around the table? This is something we learned in 1960, when we saw the supermarkets coming. Uh, we didn't have supermarkets, we didn't have the money to start with, and then at a certain point there was a big discussion and we should do this, we don't have that. Hours and hours, at the end they said, we stop. Now we empty the whole table and we just put on the table what we have available. And what was available there is the starting of Colorado Group, what is it now? what's it now? And we started a small shop, 600 square meters, with the racks we had from our cash and carries, and we started the shop 10% cheaper than the competition. We took out every one lamp out of two, we put on a asphalt floor instead of tile floor, and we sold 10% cheaper than the competition. Just with what we had available, the people we had available, the tools we had available, and nothing else. So make a plan, yes, Make a big plan, big dream, but start with what you have. And start from there, creative. Um, if I look at the company today, um, combining the dream and the plan, we call it budget. And a budget calculation is not what we have in the political, uh, politic world, but it is, what's the value of my dream? Everybody can have a good idea, and then you make a calculation, what's the value, what's the potential value? I want a new software program, and it's gonna save me 10 minutes, but not only me, but it's gonna ta save 10 minutes a day for 1,000 people. So in five years, we're gonna earn 1 million euro. And that's the budget. How much am I going to spend of that 1 million euro? I'm going to spend half of it. And the rest, if everything goes well, the rest, the 
other half is going to be the real profit. But we start from the dream, make a calculation, what's it going to bring to us in total, for example, 1 million euro, and I'm going to spend half of it. And that's the way today we still use to combine step zero, the dream, with step one, the plan. And then step two is, if we have a plan, we look at it three ways. First, what's the most positive outcome? What's the realistic outcome? And what's a catastrophe? If nothing works, we lose everything. We really look at it and then discuss with each other, are we ready to accept that possible outcome? Is our ego going, going to accept it from the start? Look at failure before you begin. And are you, are you willing to live with it? Or is the ego <laughs> going to budge? So that's step two. And step three, if you start, cut it into pieces. Don't make a big 747 airplane, but start with a little model, then a double-decker, then a small airplane, and then a big airplane. That's a story I always heard from my father and grandfather uh, about the Chinese hotel keeper who started to build a little hotel in Hong Kong, three floors. And when he had success, he demolished his hotel and built a hotel of 10 floors. When that was a success, he demolished his building, started all over again, and built a 20 floor. After a couple of years, when it was a success, he demolished the same building, same place, and built a 50-story hotel. And that's a story we still, still, in, uh, still tell in, internally in the company. You know, start over again. Start small, demolish it, and then build big, <laughs> bigger, step by step. Uh, with the experience we have in the company, but also in our venture capital uh, fund with uh, the family, it's always that story that if it's a success, big chances are if they do it that way, it's going to be a success. Bec because otherwise you invest in a big hockey stick story, <laughs> but the hockey stick stories, I didn't see many work. One out of 20, maybe. So it's better to go step by step. Uh, the experience we have up to now, four cases. One is going to be a success. Two are going to be break even at the best. And one is going to be a big failure. That's the average we have up to now. So it's good at the loss situation to look at the loss situation from the beginning. And how much money or how much ego are we ready to lose with the loss? What are we going to learn from it? So in the company where we have had many losses, uh, with Fraxicor, for example, we saw that uh, waste oil, we wanted to make electricity from waste oil because that seems a very sustainable project, but we lost 20 million euro because we didn't see that Europe made the decision that you had to put waste oil into petrol, 5%, and that was a decision that was made, made during our investment period. We didn't see that coming. And that made that the, the, the oil prices went up times three. And our oil business case was broke. So we lost about 20 million euro. That's a big, a big loss. We also had uh, auto frit. We saw McDonald's in America and said, oh, maybe we better start doing something like that in Belgium. Uh, but we started with Belgian friteur next to our shops, and it was a success. 
but at the end it failed because we put the the little restaurants on wheels on our parking lots but we had to close them because there there are friteur keepers in a, a town and you have to pay the city and we opened our friteur on our parking lot we didn't have to pay because it was our own parking lot so the, for the politics it was too difficult so we had to close them down we didn't see that coming So one out of four success, two out of four break even, and one out of four is a big loss up to now. Um, the story about the 80s, when we had a very difficult time, we went almost bankrupt. So in the 70s, the name, we had discount stores, but then the competition started using the name discount. So we had to change the name of our stores and we put our own family name on it, Colorado. We grew very fast, 15, 20% a year. Uh, we had continuous shortage of members of personnel. So we hired in one year 600 members of personnel. We went up to 3,600 people, but then something happened. Aldi came to Belgium. We all said, oh, Belgians are not going to shop in an Aldi shop store. Wrong. <laughs> Two, we had uh, a financial situation which was not strong enough. Three, we, we had our own way of doing things and we didn't share that with the outer world. And that gave the unions a chance to write a book about our company which was very negative. Um, you know, it was kind of a Marxist dialectic book, which almost killed us as a company. So we had three very difficult year, years where we really almost went broke. Luckily, we could sell our uh, petrol stations to Kuwait. That made that some money came in and that some banks said, okay, we're going to give you a new loan. That helped us a lot. The second is we went from the punch cards in our stores to barcoding in two years. And then from then on, we came out of it. So that's the book that was written about Colorado. So we had to react on, to that. The learnings we had is open up to the outer world. Say what you're doing and do what you're saying, which now today is very normal with internet and with social media. If you don't do this, then <laughs> you're out of business very quickly. Say what you're doing and do what you're saying. But that's a lesson we learned in the 80s. And the second is never, never, ever copy. Find your own way, in a positive, active, creative way, but find your own way of doing things. Never copy another. Because that way, customers can choose for you. And maybe only 20% or 30% of the customer will choose for you, for you, but they will know why they are choosing for you. And these 30% 30, 30 of the customer will be your loyal customers. Don't go for everybody. That, was, that were two lessons we learned. A failure is a present. Can you read that? Um, I don't know if you know Mr. Hawkins. Hawkins is a psychiatrist who worked about 50, 40, 50 years on levels of consciousness. And this is the table he made on the different levels of consciousness, going from level 20 to level 1000. And it's a logarithmical scale. Shame, if you at the chakra system in the, in the body, shame, guilt, apathy, 
grief, fear, anger, pride, courage, neutrality, and so on. So it's your chakra system is in there. And we're using it more and more in the company, also with teams. We're having workshops for two days to look, what, what is my level of consciousness? When I'm acting from out of pride, out of anger, what will I get? I will get anger back. If President Bush, <laughs> won't take the risk today, <laughs> but if America is acting out of pride, out of anger, they get back anger. If I am acting out of inner anger or pride or fear, what do I get back? What's the reflection I get? And what I experience is when things don't work, I have more and more the attitude in the evening when things didn't work in a meeting or whatever to look at myself and see what's happening? At what level am I thinking, feeling and reacting? Am I frustrated for some reason? What's that frustration about? And can I at least become neutral toward it? Neutral toward myself, but also new, neutral toward the other person. And for me, this is a, a great way of looking at failure. It's a, a reflection of the outer world that gives me a chance to learn about what's my level of consciousness, consciousness I'm acting from. You have to know also up to level 200, it's destructive energy. It becomes, it's a negative spiral, and above 200 is a constructive. And for me, for projects, new projects, it's good to check. At the team level, it's good to check where are we as a team. So that's tooling we're using now in the company more and more to look at learning opportunities out of failure. So Hawkins is a man I'm very thankful.